Prologue of the First Book of Adam and Eve. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The First Book of Adam and Eve. Translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Prologue. The first book of Adam and Eve details the life and times of Adam and Eve after they were expelled from the garden to the time that Cain kills his brother Abel. It tells of Adam and Eve's first dwelling, the Cave of Treasures, their trials and temptations, Satan's many apparitions to them, the birth of Cain, Abel, and their twin sisters, and Cain's love for his beautiful twin sister, Luluwa, whom Adam and Eve wished to join to Abel. This book is considered by many scholars to be part of the Pseudepigrapha. Because of that stigma, this book was not included in the compilation of the Holy Bible. This book is a written history of what happened in the days of Adam and Eve after they were cast out of the garden. Although considered to be pseudepigraphic by some, it carries significant meaning and insight into the events of that time. It is doubtful that these writings could have survived all the many centuries if there were no substance to them. This book is simply a version of an account handed down by word of mouth, from generation to generation, linking the time that the first human life was created to the time when somebody finally decided to write it down. This particular version is the work of unknown Egyptians. The lack of historical allusion makes it difficult to precisely date the writing. However, using other pseudepigraphical works as a reference, it was probably written a few hundred years before the birth of Christ. Parts of this version are found in the Jewish Talmud and in the Islamic Quran, showing what a vital role it played in the original literature of human wisdom. The Egyptian author wrote in Arabic, but later translations were found written in Ethiopic. The present English translation was translated in the late 1800s by Dr. S. C. Mallon and Dr. E. Trump. They translated into King James English from both the Arabic version and the Ethiopic version, which was then published in the Forgotten Books of Eden in 1927 by the World Publishing Company. In 1995, the text was extracted from a copy of the Forgotten Books of Eden and converted to electronic form by Dennis Hawkins. It was then translated into more modern English by simply exchanging thou's for you's, art's for ours, and so on. The text was then carefully reread to ensure its integrity. Chapters 1 through 10 of the first book of Adam and Eve. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The first book of Adam and Eve, translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Chapters 1 through 10. Chapter 1. The Crystal Sea. God commands Adam, expelled from Eden, to live in the Cave of Treasures. On the third day God planted the garden in the east of the earth, on the border of the world eastward, beyond which, towards the sun rising, one finds nothing but water that encompasses the whole world, and reaches to the borders of heaven. And to the north of the garden there is a sea of water, clear and pure to the taste, unlike anything else, so that, through the clearness thereof, one may look into the depths of the earth. And when a man washes himself in it, he becomes clean of the cleanness thereof, and white of its whiteness, even if he were dark. And God created that sea of his own good pleasure, for he knew what would come of the man he would make, so that after he had left the garden, on account of his transgression, men should be born in the earth. Among them are righteous ones who will die, whose souls God would raise at the last day, when all of them will return to their flesh, bathe in the water of that sea, and repent of their sins. But when God made Adam go out of the garden, he did not place him on the border of it northward. This was so that he and Eve would not be able to go near to the sea of water where they could wash themselves in it, be cleansed from their sins, erase the transgression they had committed, and be no longer reminded of it in the thought of their punishment. As to the southern side of the garden, God did not want Adam to live there either, because, when the wind blew from the north, it would bring him, on that southern side, the delicious smell of the trees of the garden. 
wherefore god did not put adam there this was so that he would not be able to smell the sweet smell of those trees forget his transgression and find consolation for what he had done by taking delight in the smell of the trees and yet not be cleansed from his transgression again also because god is merciful and of great pity and governs all things in a way that he alone knows he made our father Adam live in the western border of the garden, because on that side the earth is very broad. And God commanded him to live there in a cave in a rock, the cave of treasures below the garden. Chapter 2 Adam and Eve faint when they leave the garden. God sends his word to encourage them. But when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden, they walked the ground on their feet, not knowing they were walking. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden, and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled, and fell on their faces from the fear that came over them, and they were as dead. Because, whereas until this time they had been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manner of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land which they knew not and had never seen and because when they were in the garden they were filled with the grace of a bright nature and they had not hearts turned toward earthly things therefore god had pity on them and when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden he sent his word to our father adam and eve and raised them from their fallen state Chapter 3 Concerning the Promise of the Great Five and a Half Days God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and you and your descendants shall live and walk in them, until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send the word that created you, and against which you have transgressed, the word that made you come out of the garden, and that raised you when you were fallen. Yes, the word that will again save you when the five and a half days are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five and a half days, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking there would be only five and a half days for him until the end of the world. And Adam cried, and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God, in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and likeness, explained to him that these were five thousand and five hundred years, and how one would then come and save him and his descendants. But before that, God had made this covenant with our father Adam in the same terms, before he came out of the garden, when he was by the tree where Eve took of the fruit and gave it to him to eat. Because when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree, and saw how God had changed the appearance of it into another form, and how it shriveled. And as Adam went to it, he feared, and trembled, and fell down. But God, in his mercy, lifted him up, and then made this covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden, and saw the cherub with a sword of flashing fire in his hand, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him, both Adam and Eve became afraid of him, and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them, and showed them mercy, and turning from them went up to heaven, and prayed to the Lord, and said, Lord, you sent me to watch at the garden of the gate with a sword of fire. But when your servants Adam and Eve saw me, they fell on their faces and were as dead. O oh, my Lord, what shall we do to your servants? Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve and raised them up. And the Lord said to Adam, I told you that at the end of the five and a half days, I will send my word and save you. Strengthen your heart, therefore, and stay in the cave of treasures, of which I have before spoken to you. And when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted with that which God had told him, for he had told him how he would save him. Chapter 4 Adam mourns over the changed conditions. Adam and Eve enter the cave of treasures. But Adam and Eve cried for having come out of the garden, their first home. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he cried bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done. 
and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. And as they came to it, Adam cried over himself and said to Eve, Look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world, and a place of punishment. What is it compared with the garden? What is its narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is the gloom of this cavern compared with the light of the garden? What is this overhanging ledge of rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? What is the soil of this cave compared to the garden land? This earth strewn with stones and that planted with delicious fruit trees. And Adam said to Eve, Look at your eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels praising in heaven, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see like they used to see before. And Adam said again to Eve, What is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we lived in the garden? After this, Adam did not want to enter the cave under the overhanging rock nor would he ever want to enter it. But he bowed to God's orders and said to himself, Unless I enter the cave, I shall again be a transgressor. Chapter 5 Eve makes a noble and emotional intercession, taking the blame on herself. Then Adam and Eve entered the cave and stood praying in their own tongue, unknown to us, but which they knew well. And as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock and the roof of the cave that covered him overhead. This prevented him from seeing either heaven or God's creatures. So he cried and beat his chest hard, until he dropped and was as dead. And Eve sat crying, for she believed he was dead. Then she got up, spread her hands toward God, appealing to him for mercy and pity, and said, O oh God, forgive me my sin, the sin which I committed, and don't remember it against me. For I alone caused your servant to fall from the garden into this condemned land, from light into darkness, and from the house of joy into this prison. O oh God, look at this your servant fallen in this manner, and bring him back to life, that he may cry and repent of his transgression which he committed through me. Don't take away his soul right now, but let him live that he may stand after the measure of his repentance and do your will as before his death. But if you do not bring him back to life, then, O oh God, take away my own soul, that I be like him, and leave me not in this dungeon, one and alone, for I could not stand alone in this world, but with him only. For you, O oh God, caused him to fall asleep, and took a bone from his side, and restored the flesh in the place of it, by your divine power. And you took me, the bone, and make me a woman, bright like him, with heart, reason, and speech, and in flesh, like to his own, and you made me after the likeness of his looks, by your mercy and power. O oh Lord, I and he are one, and you, O oh God, are our creator. You are he who made us both in one day. Therefore, O oh God, give him life, that he may be with me in the strange land, while we live in it on account of our transgression. But if you will not give him life, then take me, even me, like him, that we may both die the same day. And Eve cried bitterly, and fell on our father Adam, from her great sorrow. Chapter 6 God's reprimand to Adam and Eve in which he points out how and why they sinned. But God looked at them, for they had killed themselves through great grief, but he decided to raise them and comfort them. He therefore sent his word to them, that they should stand and be raised immediately. And the Lord said to Adam and Eve, you transgressed of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desires for divinity, greatness, and an exalted state, such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were, and I made you come out of the garden into this land, rough and full of trouble. If only you had not transgressed my commandment and kept my law, and had not eaten of the fruit of the tree which I told you not to come near. And there were fruit trees in the garden better than that one. 
but the wicked satan did not keep his faith and had no good intent towards me that although i had created him he considered me to be useless and sought the godhead for himself for this i hurled him down from heaven so that he could not remain in his first estate it was he who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes until you ate of it by believing his words thus have you transgressed my commandment and therefore i have brought on you all these sorrows for i am god the creator who when i created my creatures did not intend to destroy them but after they have sorely roused my anger i punish them with grievous plagues until they repent but if on the contrary they continue hardened in their transgression they shall be under a curse for ever chapter seven the beasts are appeased when adam and eve heard these words from god they cried and sobbed yet more but they strengthened their hearts in god because they now felt that the lord was to them like a father and a mother and for this reason they cried before him and sought mercy from him then god had pity on them and said o oh adam i have made my covenant with you and i will not turn from it neither will i let you return to the garden until my covenant of the great five and a half days is fulfilled then adam said to god o oh lord you created us and made us fit to be in the garden and before i transgressed you made all beasts come to me that i should name them your grace was then on me and i named every one according to your mind and you made them all subject to me but now o oh lord god that i have transgressed your commandment all beasts will rise against me and will devour me and eve your handmaid and will cut off our life from the face of the earth i therefore beg you o oh god that since you have made us come out of the garden and have made us to be in a strange land you will not let the beasts hurt us when the lord heard these words from adam he had pity on him and felt that he had truly said that the beasts of the field would rise and devour him and eve because he the lord was angry with the two of them on account of their transgressions then god commanded the beasts and the birds and all that moves on the earth to come to adam and to be familiar with him and not to trouble him and eve nor yet any of the good and righteous among their offspring then all the beasts paid homage to adam according to the commandment of god except the serpent against which god was angry it did not come to adam with the beasts chapter eight the bright nature of man is taken away then adam cried and said o oh god when we lived in the garden and our hearts were lifted up we saw angels that sang praises in heaven but now we can't see like we used to no when we entered the cave all creation became hidden from us then god the lord said to adam when you were under subjection to me you had a bright nature within you and for that reason could you see things far away but after your transgression your bright nature was withdrawn from you and it was not left to you to see things far away but only near at hand after the ability of the flesh for it is brutish when adam and eve had heard these words from god they went their way praising and worshiping him with a sorrowful heart and god ceased to commune with them chapter nine water from the tree of life adam and eve near drowning then adam and eve came out of the cave of treasures and went near to the garden gate and there they stood to look at it and cried for having come away from it and adam and eve went from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life and that split itself from there into four rivers over the earth then they came and went near to that water and looked at it and saw that it was the water that came forth from under the root of the tree of life in the garden and adam cried and wailed and beat his chest for being severed from the garden and said to eve why have you brought on me on yourself and on our descendants so many of these plagues and punishments and eve said to him what is it you have seen that has caused you to cry and to speak to me in this manner and he said to eve do you not see this water that was with us in the garden that watered the trees of the garden and flowed out from there and we when we were in the garden did not care about it but since we came to this strange land we love it and turn it to use for our body 
But when Eve heard these words from him, she cried, and from the soreness of their crying, they fell into that water, and would have put an end to themselves in it, so as never again to return and behold the creation. For when they looked at the work of creation, they felt they must put an end to themselves. Chapter 10 Their Bodies Need Water After They Leave the Garden Then God, merciful and gracious, looked at them thus lying in the water and close to death, and sent an angel, who brought them out of the water, and laid them on the seashore as dead. Then the angel went up to God, was welcome, and said, O oh God, your creatures have breathed their last. Then God sent his word to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. And Adam said, after he was raised, O oh God, while we were in the garden we did not require or care for this water, but since we came to this land we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, While you were under my command and were a bright angel, you knew not this water. But now that you have transgressed my commandment, you cannot do without water, wherein to wash your body and make it grow. For it is now like that of beasts, and is in want of water. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they cried a bitter cry. And Adam entreated God to let him return into the garden and look at it a second time. But God said to Adam, I have made you a promise, and when that promise is fulfilled, I will bring you back into the garden, you and your righteous descendants. And God ceased to commune with Adam. End of chapters 1 through 10、Chapters 11 through 20 of the first book of Adam and Eve. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The First Book of Adam and Eve, translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Chapters 11 through 20. Chapter 11 A Recollection of the Glorious Days in the Garden. Then Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst and heat and sorrow. And Adam said to Eve, We shall not drink of this water, even if we were to die. O、oh, Eve, when this water comes into our inner parts, it will increase our punishments and that of our descendants. Both Adam and Eve then went away from the water and drank none of it at all, but came and entered the cave of treasures. But when in it Adam could not see Eve, he only heard the noise she made. Neither could she see Adam, but heard the noise he made. Then Adam cried in deep affliction and beat his chest, and he got up and said to Eve, Where are you? And she said to him, Look, I'm standing in this darkness. And then he said to her, Remember the bright nature in which we lived when we lived in the garden. O、oh, Eve, remember the glory that rested on us in the garden. O、oh, Eve, remember the trees that overshadowed us in the garden while we moved among them. O、oh, Eve, remember that while we were in the garden, we knew neither night nor day. Think of the tree of life, from below which flowed the water, and that shed luster over us. Remember, O、oh, Eve, the garden land and the brightness thereof. Think, Oh, think of that garden in which was no darkness while we lived in it. Whereas no sooner did we come into this cave of treasures than darkness surrounded us all around, until we can no longer see each other, and all the pleasure of this life has come to an end. Chapter 12 How Darkness Came Between Adam and Eve. Then Adam beat his chest, he and Eve, and they mourned the whole night until the crack of dawn. And they sighed over the length of the night in m i a z i a And Adam beat himself and threw himself on the ground in the cave from bitter grief and because of the darkness and lay there as dead. But Eve heard the sound he made in falling on the ground, and she felt about for him with her hands and found him like a corpse. Then she was afraid, speechless, and remained by him. But the merciful Lord looked on the death of Adam and on Eve's silence from fear of the darkness. And the word of God came to Adam and raised him from his death, and opened Eve's mouth that she might speak. Then Adam stood up in the cave and said, O、oh、God, why has light departed from us, and darkness covered us? 
Why did you leave us in this long darkness? Why do you plague us like this? And this darkness, O Lord, where was it before it covered us? It is because of this we cannot see each other. For so long as we were in the garden, we neither saw nor even knew what darkness is. I was not hidden from Eve, neither was she hidden from me, until now that she cannot see me, and no darkness came over us to separate us from each other. But she and I were both in one bright light. I saw her, and she saw me. Yet now, since we came into this cave, darkness has covered us and separated us from each other, so that I do not see her, and she does not see me. O oh Lord, will you then plague us with this darkness? Chapter 13 The Fall of Adam Why Night and Day Were Created Then when God, who is merciful and full of pity, heard Adam's voice, he said to him, O oh Adam, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and on his hosts. But when he transgressed my commandment, I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became dark. And when he was in the heavens, in the realms of light, he knew nothing of darkness. But he transgressed, and I made him fall from the heaven onto the earth, and it was this darkness that came over him. And on you, O Adam, while in my garden and obedient to me, did that bright light rest also. But when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet, of my mercy, I did not turn you into darkness, but I made you your body of flesh, over which I spread this skin, in order that it may bear cold and heat. If I had let my wrath fall heavily on you, I should have destroyed you. And had I turned you into darkness, it would have been as if I had killed you. But in my mercy, I have made you as you are. When you transgress my commandment, O Adam, I drove you from the garden, and made you come forth into this land, and commanded you to live in this cave, and darkness covered you, as it did over him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, O Adam, has this night deceived you. It is not to last forever, but is only of twelve hours. When it is over, daylight will return. Sigh not, therefore, neither be moved, and say not in your heart that this darkness is long and drags on wearily, and say not in your heart that I plague you with it. Strengthen your heart and be not afraid. This darkness is not a punishment. But, O oh Adam, I have made the day, and have placed the sun in it to give light, in order that you and your children should do your work. For I knew you would sin and transgress, and come out into this land. Yet I wouldn't force you, nor be heard over you, nor shut up, nor doom you through your fall, nor through your coming out from light into darkness, nor yet through your coming from the garden into this land. For I made you of the light, and I willed to bring out children of light from you, and light to you. But you did not keep my commandment one day, until I had finished the creation and blessed everything in it. Then, concerning the tree, I commanded you not to eat of it. Yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive you. So I made known to you by means of the tree, not to come near him. And I told you not to eat of the fruit thereof nor to taste of it, nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. Had I not been and spoken to you, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left you without a commandment, and you had sinned, it would have been an offense on my part for not having given you any order. You would turn around and blame me for it. But I commanded you, and warned you, and you fell, so that my creatures cannot blame me, but the blame rests on them alone. And, O oh Adam, I have made the day so that you and your descendants can work and toil in it. And I have made the night for them to rest in it from their work, and for the beasts of the field to go forth by night and look for their food. But little of darkness now remains, O oh Adam, and daylight will soon appear. Chapter 14 The Earliest Prophecy of the Coming of Christ Then Adam said to God, O oh Lord, take you, my soul, and let me not see this gloom any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. But God the Lord said to Adam, Indeed I say to you, this darkness will pass from you, every day I have determined for you. 
until the fulfillment of my covenant, when I will save you and bring you back again into the garden, into the house of light you long for, in which there is no darkness. Footnote. Reference John 12, verse 46. and footnote. I will bring you to it in the kingdom of heaven. Again, said God to Adam, all this misery that you have been made to take on yourself because of your transgression will not free you from the hand of Satan and will not save you. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of your descendants and take on myself the infirmity from which you suffer. Then the darkness that covered you in this cave shall cover me in the grave when I am in the flesh of your descendants. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men, in order to save you. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Chapter 15 Adam and Eve grieve over the suffering of God to save them from their sins. Then Adam and Eve cried and sorrowed by reason of God's word to them, that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed on them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. Chapter 16 The First Sunrise Adam and Eve think it is a fire coming to burn them. After this, Adam and Eve continued to stand in the cave, praying and crying, until the morning dawned on them. And when they saw the light return to them, they retrained from fear and strengthened their hearts. Then Adam began to come out of the cave, and when he came to the mouth of it, and stood and turned his face towards the east, and saw the sunrise and glowing rays, and felt the heat thereof on his body, he was afraid of it, and thought in his heart that this flame came forth to plague him. He then cried and beat his chest, then he fell on the ground on his face and made his request, saying, O oh Lord, plague me not, neither consume me, nor yet take away my life from the earth. For he thought the Son was God. Because while he was in the garden, and heard the voice of God, and the sound he made in the garden, and feared him, Adam never saw the brilliant light of the sun, neither did its flaming heat touch his body. Therefore he was afraid of the sun when flaming rays of it reached him. He thought God meant to plague him therewith all the days he had decreed for him. For Adam also said in his thoughts, As God did not plague us with darkness, Behold, he has caused this sun to rise and to plague us with burning heat. But while he was thinking like this in his heart, the word of God came to him and said, O oh Adam, get up on your feet. This sun is not God, but it has been created to give light by day, of which I spoke to you in the cave, saying, that the dawn would come and there would be light by day. But I am God who comforted you in the night. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Chapter 17 The Chapter of the Serpent Then Adam and Eve came out at the mouth of the cave and went towards the garden. But as they went near it, before the western gate, from which Satan came when he deceived Adam and Eve, they found the serpent that became Satan coming at the gate, and sorrowfully licking the dust, and wiggling on its breast on the ground, by reason of the curse that fell on it from God. And whereas before the serpent was the most exalted of all beasts, now it was changed and become slippery, and the meanest of them all. And it crept on its breast and went on its belly. And whereas it was the fairest of all beasts, it had been changed, and was become the ugliest of them all. Instead of feeding on the best food, now it turned to eat the dust. Instead of living, as before, in the best places, now it lived in the dust. And, whereas it had been the most beautiful of all beasts, all of which stood dumb in its beauty, it was now abhorred of them. And again, whereas it lived in one beautiful home, to which all other animals came from elsewhere, and where it drank, they drank also of the same, now, after it had become venomous, by reason of God's curse, all beasts fled from its home, and would not drink of the water it drank, but fled from it. Chapter 18 The Mortal Combat with the Serpent When the accursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head and stood on its tail, and with eyes blood-red, acted like it would kill them. 
it made straight for eve and ran after her while adam standing by cried because he had no stick in his hand with which to hit the serpent and did not know how to put it to death but with a heart burning for eve adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail when it turned towards him and said to him o oh, adam because of you and of eve i am slippery and go on my belly then with its great strength it threw down adam and eve and squeezed them and tried to kill them but god sent an angel who threw the serpent away from them and raised them up then the word of god came to the serpent and said to it the first time i made you slick and made you go on your belly but i did not deprive you of speech this time however you will be mute and you and your race will speak no more because the first time my creatures were ruined because of you and this time you tried to kill them then the serpent was struck mute and was no longer able to speak and a wind blew down from heaven by the command of god and carried away the serpent from adam and eve and threw it on the seashore where it landed in india chapter nineteen beasts made subject to adam but adam and eve cried before god and adam said to him o oh lord when i was in the cave i said to you my lord the beasts of the field would rise and devour me and cut off my life from the earth then adam because of what had happened to him beat his chest and fell on the ground like a corpse then the word of god came to him who raised him and said to him o oh, adam not one of these beasts will be able to hurt you because i have made the beasts and other moving things come to you in the cave i did not let the serpent come with them because it might have risen against you and made you tremble and the fear of it should fall into your hearts for i knew that the accursed one is wicked therefore i would not let it come near you with the other beasts but now strengthen your heart and fear not i am with you to the end of the days i have determined on you chapter twenty adam wishes to protect eve then adam cried and said o oh god take us away to some other place where the serpent cannot come near us again and rise against us for fear that it might find your handmaid eve alone and kill her for its eyes are hideous and evil but god said to adam and eve from now on don't be afraid i will not let it come near you I have driven it away from you, from this mountain. Neither will I leave in it the ability to hurt you. Then Adam and Eve worshipped before God and gave him thanks and praised him for having delivered them from death. End of chapters 11 through 20. Chapters 21 through 30 of the first book of Adam and Eve. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The First Book of Adam and Eve, translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Chapters 21 through 30. Chapter 21 adam and eve attempt suicide then adam and eve went in search of the garden and the heat beat like a flame on their faces and they sweated from the heat and cried before the lord but the place where they cried was close to a high mountain facing the western gate of the garden then adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain his face was torn and his flesh was ripped he lost a lot of blood and was close to death Meanwhile, Eve remained standing on the mountain crying over him, thus lying. And she said, I don't wish to live after him, for all that he did to himself was through me. Then she threw herself after him, and was torn and ripped by stones, and remained lying as dead. But the merciful God, who looks over his creatures, looked at Adam and Eve as they lay dead, and he sent his word to them and raised them, and said to Adam, O oh, Adam, all this misery which you have brought on yourself will have no effect against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant of five thousand five hundred years. Chapter 22 Adam in a Gracious Mood Then Adam said to God, I dry up in the heat, 
I am faint from walking, and I don't want to be in this world, and I don't know when you will take me out of it to rest. Then the Lord God said to him, O oh Adam, it cannot be now, not until you have ended your days. Then I shall bring you out of this miserable land. And Adam said to God, While I was in the garden, I knew neither heat nor languor, neither moving about nor trembling, nor fear. But now since I came to this land, all this affliction has come over me. Then God said to Adam, So long as you were keeping my commandment, my light and my grace rested on you. But when you transgressed my commandment, sorrow and misery came to you in this land. And Adam cried and said, O oh Lord, do not cut me off from this, neither punish me with heavy plagues, nor yet repay me according to my sin. For we, of our own will, transgressed your commandment and ignored your law, and tried to become gods like you, when Satan the enemy deceived us. Then God again said to Adam, Because you have endured fear and trembling in this land, languor and suffering, treading and walking about, going on this mountain and dying from it, I will take all this on myself in order to save you. Chapter 23 Adam and Eve strengthened themselves to make the first altar ever built. Then Adam cried more and said, O oh God, have mercy on me, so far as to take on yourself that which I will do. But God withdrew his word from Adam and Eve. Then Adam and Eve stood on their feet, and Adam said to Eve, Strengthen yourself, and I also will strengthen myself. And she strengthened herself, as Adam told her. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped, from the face of the rock, the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust with which it was mingled, and offered it on the altar as an offering to God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and cried, thus praying to God, Forgive us our trespass and our sin. Footnote Original of the Lord's Prayer said to be used about 150 years before our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, be gracious unto us. O Lord our God, hallowed be your name. And let the remembrance of thee be glorified heaven above and upon earth here below. Let your kingdom reign over us now and forever. The holy men of old said remit and forgive unto all men whatsoever they have done unto me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil thing. For thine is the kingdom, and thou shalt reign in glory for ever and for evermore. Amen. And footnote. And look at us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before you without ceasing. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, nor long discernment, nor upright feelings, neither is our bright nature left us. But our body is changed from the likeness in which it was at first, when we were created. Yet now look at our blood which is offered on these stones, and accepted at our hands, like the praise we used to sing to you at first, when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests of God. Chapter 24 A Vivid Prophecy of the Life and Death of Christ Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, looked at Adam and Eve and at their blood, which they had held up as an offering to him, without an order from him for doing so. But he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelled the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, as you have shed your blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of your descendants. And as you died, O oh Adam, so also will I die. And as you built an altar, so also will I make for you an altar of the earth. And as you offered your blood on it, so also will I offer my blood on an altar on the earth. And as you sued for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins, and erase transgressions in it. And now, behold, I have accepted your offering, O Adam, but the days of the covenant in which I have bound you are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, 
then will I bring you back into the garden. Now, therefore, strengthen your heart, and when sorrow comes over you, make me an offering, and I will be favorable to you. Chapter 25 God Represented as Merciful and Loving The Establishment of Worship But God knew that Adam believed he should frequently kill himself and make an offering to him of his blood. Therefore he said to him, O oh Adam, don't ever kill yourself like this again, by throwing yourself down from that mountain. But Adam said to God, I was thinking to put an end to myself at once, for having transgressed your commandments, and for my having come out of the beautiful garden, and for the bright light of which you have deprived me, and for the praises which poured forth from my mouth without ceasing, and for the light that covered me. Yet of your goodness, O God, do not get rid of me altogether, but be favorable to me every time I die, and bring me to life. And thereby it will be made known that you are a merciful God, who does not want anyone to perish, who loves that not one should fall, and who does not condemn anyone cruelly, badly, and by whole destruction. Then Adam remained silent. And the word of God came to him, and blessed him, and comforted him, and covenanted with him, that he would save him at the end of the days determined for him. This, then, was the first offering Adam made to God, and so it became his custom to do. Chapter 26 A Beautiful Prophecy of Eternal Life and Joy Verse 15 The Fall of Night Then Adam took Eve, and they began to return to the cave of treasures where they lived, but when they got closer to it and saw it from a distance, heavy sorrow fell on Adam and Eve when they looked at it. Then Adam said to Eve, When we were on the mountain we were comforted by the word of God that conversed with us, and the light that came from the east shone over us. But now the word of God is hidden from us, and the light that shone over us is so changed as to disappear, and let darkness and sorrow come over us. And we are forced to enter this cave which is like a prison, in which darkness covers us, so that we are separated from each other, and you cannot see me, neither can I see you. When Adam had said these words, they cried and spread their hands before God, for they were full of sorrow. And they prayed to God to bring the sun to them, to shine on them, so that darkness would not return to them, and that they wouldn't have to go under this covering of rock and they wished to die rather than to see the darkness. Then God looked at Adam and Eve and at their great sorrow, and at all they had done with a fervent heart, on account of all the trouble they were in, instead of their former well-being, and on account of all the misery that came over them in a strange land. Therefore God was not angry with them, nor impatient with them, but he was patient and forbearing towards them, as towards the children he had created. Then came the word of God to Adam, and said to him, Adam, as for the sun, if I were to take it and bring it to you, days, hours, years, and months would all stop, and the covenant I have made with you would never be fulfilled. But then you would be deserted and struck in a perpetual plague, and you would never be saved. Yes, rather, bear long and calm your soul while you live night and day, until the fulfillment of the days and the time of my covenant is come. Then I shall come and save you, O Adam, for I do not wish that you be afflicted. And when I look at all the good things in which you lived, and why you came out of them, then would I willingly show you mercy. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth, otherwise I would have brought you back into the garden. When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, then I shall show you and your descendants mercy, and bring you into a land of gladness, where there is neither sorrow nor suffering, but abiding joy and gladness, and light that never fails, and praises that never cease, and a beautiful garden that shall never pass away. And God said again to Adam, Be patient and enter the cave, for the darkness, of which you were afraid, shall only be twelve hours long, and when ended, light shall come up. Then when Adam heard these words from God, he and Eve worshipped before him, and their hearts were comforted. They returned into the cave after their custom, while tears flowed from their eyes, sorrow and wailing came from their hearts, and they wished their soul would leave their body. And Adam and Eve stood praying until the darkness of night came over them. And Adam was hid from Eve, and she from him. And they remained standing in prayer. 
Chapter 27 The Second Tempting of Adam and Eve The Devil Takes on the Form of a Beguiling Light when Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer, and how God communed with them and comforted them, and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts. In his hands was a flashing fire, and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter into it by reason of their prayers, and he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his hosts began to sing praises. And Satan did this, in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that it was a heavenly light, and that Satan's hosts were angels, and that God had sent them to watch at the cave, and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby, and a second time humble him before God. When, therefore, Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet, as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at all those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside who won't come into our cave. Why don't they tell us what they want, where they are from, what the meaning of this light is, what those praises are, why they have been sent to this place, and why they won't come in? If they were from God, they would come into the cave with us, and would tell us why they were sent. Then Adam stood up and prayed to God with a burning heart, and said, O oh Lord, is there in the world another God besides you, who created angels and filled them with light, and sent them to keep us, who would come with them? But look, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in a great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some other god than you, tell me. And if they are sent by you, inform me of the reason for which you have sent them. No sooner had Adam said this, than an angel from God appeared to him in the cave, who said to Adam, O oh Adam, fear not, this is Satan and his hosts. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time he is come to you in the likeness of an angel of light in order that, when you worshipped him, he might enslave you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam, and seized Satan at the opening of the cave, and stripped him of all the pretense he had assumed, and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve, who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, This hideous form has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it. He therefore transformed himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his hosts from Adam and Eve, and said to them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel left them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave. No consolation came to them. They divided in their thoughts. And when it was morning they prayed, and then went out to seek the garden, for their hearts were towards it, and they could get no consolation for having left it. Chapter 28 The Devil Pretends to Lead Adam and Eve to the Water to Bathe But when the crafty Satan saw them, that they were going to the garden, he gathered together his hosts, and came in appearance on a cloud, intent on deceiving them. But when Adam and Eve saw him thus in a vision, they thought they were angels of God come to comfort them about having left the garden, or to bring them back again into it. And Adam spread his hands before God, beseeching him to make him understand what they were. Then Satan, the hater of all good, said to Adam, O oh Adam, I am an angel of the great God, and behold the hosts that surround me. God has sent us to take you and bring you to the border of the garden northwards, to the shore of the clear sea, and bathe you and Eve in it, and raise you to your former gladness, that you return to the garden again. These words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. Yet God withheld his word from Adam, and did not make him understand at once, but waited to see his strength, whether he would be overcome as Eve was when in the garden, or whether he would prevail. Then Satan called to Adam and Eve and said, Behold, we go to the sea of water. And they began to go. And Adam and Eve followed them at some little distance. But when they came to the mountain to the north of the garden, a very high mountain, without any steps to the top of it, 
the devil drew near to adam and eve and made them go up to the top in reality and not in a vision wishing as he did to throw them down and kill them and to wipe off their name from the earth so that this earth would remain to him and his hosts alone chapter twenty nine god tells adam of the devil's purpose verse four but when the merciful god saw that satan wished to kill adam with his many tricks and saw that adam was meek and without guile god spoke to satan in a loud voice and cursed him then he and his hosts fled and adam and eve remained standing on the top of the mountain from there they saw below them the wide world high above which they were but they saw none of the hosts which time after time were by them they cried both adam and eve before god and begged for forgiveness of him then came the word from god to adam and said to him know you and understand concerning this satan that he seeks to deceive you and your descendants after you and adam cried before the lord god and begged and prayed to him to give him something from the garden as a token to him wherein to be comforted and god considered adam's thought and sent the angel michael as far as the sea that reaches india to take from there golden rods and bring them to adam this god did in his wisdom in order that these golden rods being with adam in the cave should shine forth with light in the night around him and put an end to his fear of the darkness then the angel michael went down by god's order took golden rods as god had commanded him and brought them to god chapter thirty adam receives the first worldly goods after these things god commanded the angel gabriel to go down to the garden and to say to the cherub who kept it behold god has commanded me to come into the garden and to take from it its sweet smelling incense and give it to adam then the angel gabriel went down by god's order to the garden and told the cherub as god had commanded him the cherub then said well and gabriel went in and took the incense then god commanded his angel raphael to go down to the garden and speak to the cherub about some myrrh to give to adam and the angel raphael went down and told the cherub as god had commanded him and the cherub said well then raphael went in and took the myrrh the golden rods were from the indian sea where there are precious stones the incense was from the eastern border of the garden and the myrrh from the western border from where bitterness came over adam and the angels brought these things to god by the tree of life in the garden then god said to the angels dip them in the spring water then take them and sprinkle their water over adam and eve that they will be a little comforted in their sorrow and give them to adam and eve and the angels did as god had commanded them and gave all those things to adam and eve on top of the mountain on which satan had placed them when he sought to make an end of them and when adam saw the golden rods the incense and the myrrh he was rejoiced and cried because he thought that the gold was a token of the kingdom from where he had come that the incense was a token of the bright light which had been taken from him and that the myrrh was a token of the sorrow in which he was end of chapter twenty one through thirty